We are now very fortunate to have with us uh, Dr. Chuck Hopkins, a good friend of RC Saskatchewan who's had a live or virtual presence at most of our RC Saskatchewan recognition events. Uh, Dr. Hopkins is the UNESCO Chair in Reorienting Education Towards Sustainability at York University and has developed an international network of teacher preparation institutions spanning over 70 countries focused upon teacher education to address sustainable development, as well as a global network on Indigenous youth and education for sustainable development. He is an advisor to UNESCO's Global Action Program on ESD and acts as the UN University Global Advisor for RCEs. Dr. Hopkins will speak to us today on how to connect the dots to the 17 UN Sustainable Development Goals. Welcome, Chuck. Thanks again, Roger, and and thank you, Megan, for that uh, that great presentation on on uh, how environmental education is morphing and changing and and uh, and adapting. Uh, first of all, though, I, I'm zooming in from Toronto, and so in keeping with the, uh, the the such respectful tone that was set by Elder Star and by Roger and by others throughout this recognition event. I, uh, I want to acknowledge my presence on the territorial uh, territory of the um, of many indigenous nations. Uh, this area known as Toronto, as it was called, has been caretaken by the Anishinaabeg Nation, the Haudenosaunee Confederacy, and the Huron Winda. It is now home to many First Nation Inuit and Métis communities, of course. I acknowledge the current treaty holders, the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation. And this territory is subject of the dish with one spoon wampum belt covenant. It was a, an agreement to peacefully share and care for the entire Great Lakes regions. So as uh, Roger uh, stated, what um, he asked, asked me to take a few moments and try and make the, the link uh, to the, the, the global sustainable development goals. And uh, as I mentioned before, the RCEs are sort of this fantastic bridge mechanism because at, at the top end, you have what has been negotiated by nations, by countries and so on. And uh, in, in an attempt to try and, and address these huge global issues that are out there, they have in this third implementation strategy, the, the first one being during the 90s, we had Agenda 21, and then in the, from 2000 to 2015, we had the Millennium Development Goals. And now from 2015 to 2030, we have something called the Sustainable Development Goals. But they were trying to balance how do we provide environmental concern, environmental protection, and so on, as, as Megan was largely talking about. How do we deal with that at the same time, addressing the millions of people who are living in abject poverty, who uh, uh, their, their life is, is in, in so precarious. And, and yet on the other hand, we have those who are living in, in abject uh, um, um, luxury. You know, we talk about abject poverty, but we don't talk about abject wealth. You know, it, it, it's strange. But at any rate, these are some of the huge issues that are out there. But for young people and for, for most, we have to also look at them as opportunities. These huge issues are going to shape the economy of the future. They're not going away. And so what we have to do is to look at ways in which we, we can recognize, acknowledge, and in many ways uh, uh, um, address. Now, the overarching idea, we have, as I said, now the 17 Sustainable Development Goals, but these are just an implementation scheme of the bigger picture of trying to agree upon a paradigm that all countries, and we're now we're trying to engage business, industry, faith-based groups, all into this kind of a, of a way of seeing the future. 
with now it uh, as of 2015 with it could be the five hoops right originally we had environment which now is referred to as planet we had society which is now referred to as people we had economy which is now looked at as prosperity but we are adding two more and one of them being peace not just between countries, but peace within countries, peace within communities, peace within oneself. And the really important one that applies to those of us in RCEs, that is the idea of partnership, of coming together, of forming community, so on. Now, I love the idea of the, you know, the idea of learning from tradition, learning from the past, and uh, recognize traditional ecological knowledge. And it continually comes up a bit in, in UN talk, but it, it, it still is nowhere near the recognition that it, it really deserves. If I move on, then at the global level, you have these 17, which it's important to see uh, uh, our application of those five, but it's also important not to look at them individually. Think of a patchwork quilt. Okay. One patch is not going to help that much. What we really need is to look at them in an integrated uh, uh, approach. How do, how do we bring them together? Now, if you think, though, of that bridge, what we're trying to do is how do we make these 17 goals? How do we bring them down to the community level where they become meaningful, not just in policy at the national, in national governments, but how do we make them locally relevant, culturally appropriate? Okay? How, do, how do we have people conceptualize what are the issues and, and how do we put these things in perspective? And so that was the idea behind in 2002, 2003, when we started thinking about how, how could we localize and what would be the role of education, public understanding, public awareness and understanding and training programs. How, how could education in its broadest sense, how could this fit in? And so the idea of the RCEs was born. We started with seven around the entire world. Now, as Kim Smith pointed out, yes, we're now up to 117. And next year, we'll probably add five or six more. Uh, Roger, by the way, is the advisor to all the RCEs in the Americas. And, and RCE Saskatchewan is very, very influential, not only within the Americas, but globally and, and uh, with direct access into Tokyo. So what we are doing though, is we are creating not only the RCE and as, a, as an individual, but what we are trying to do is to learn how uh, we, how we can be effective and share our learnings with others. And I was serious when I said the idea of the, of the events at recognition uh, program that, that you hold, that influenced Tokyo it, it, to, to having global recognition events and so on, okay? Now, when you, in, in Saskatchewan, uh, the, your RCE has chosen these as sort of your version of the 17 sustainable development goals. Not that you're going to ignore the 17 goals, but you're trying to bring them down into scale, bring them into scope, into meaningfulness, and so on, and uh, in order to try and, and move forward. Now, the thing that... Uh, <clears throat> It's how do you, how do you relate and share this knowledge with others? And uh, 
I, I think that is an extremely uh, in, in, important component to, because what you're doing there is so very, very useful. Let me uh, sort of almost close with, I think three steps that we are, are learning with any particular issue. And the first step, we all want to say, how can we prevent it? And, and how do we have to become aware? What is it? Is it now? What is likely coming down the road? And then engage. The second step is mitigation. How do we re anticipate, strategize, and try to reduce the impact? Okay. How, how can we have, have preparedness uh, ready for it? And then the third one is how can we begin to adapt? How early on? So the jar is, is, is uh, uh, the hit of, of uh, sustainability issues being dumped upon us is not nearly so severe. So we can look out into what is happening globally. We also need to look in what is happening in our community. Is our village or town growing? Is it contracting? How are we going to address that and, and so on? How do we bring decent work, meaningful employment? How do we, how do we engage with immigration? So remember, it's not just environment, it's social, economic, and, and, and environmental, and doing it in partnerships to provide peaceful communities. So lastly, I'm inspired, um, I guess, with uh, Pam Belcher's uh, The Building the Power of One. And I'd like you to think of, uh, we all have an ecological footprint, but we also have hands. There are things we can do about it. And so I hope that uh, through our work within the RCEs around the world, and that our handprints always exceed our footprints. Thank you very much for this opportunity to be with you again. And once again, back to you, Roger. Well, thank you, Chuck. Uh, talk about somebody who has uh, an amazing uh, ecological handprint. <laughs> so thank you for being with us. We now have a bit of an opportunity for questions and I'll invite Margaret Asmus to moderate uh, this if we've got any questions that have come. Uh, just one question, uh, perhaps for Chuck. Uh, I know there's some really big events coming up uh, in terms of UNESCO. Do you want to say, uh, say a bit about that, uh, the UNESCO Global Summit coming up? Yeah. Um, uh, and, and when I'm through, I see uh, Orly wanted to, uh, to say something, I believe. But yes. Um, with, along with the sustainable development goals, each of the UN agencies is asked to try and, and, and contribute. That's why one of the focus of, of the um, of United Nations University is trying to get the RCEs to, in their own way, address the sustainable development goals as part of our mission. What UNESCO is doing itself is because it's responsible for SDG uh, 4, well, on education, it is coming up with a program called ESD for 2030. And it's a 10 year initiative on uh, using education, public awareness and training to support the sustainable development goals. Not only SDG four, but education, public awareness and training or ESD is a key enabler of all 17 goals. So it is crucial and hence they are coming up with a 10 year program. The 10 year program is being launched in Berlin next week. And on Monday, Tuesday and Wednesday um, of, of next week, uh, if you just go into the internet, look for ESD for 2030, you should be able to find it. It will be on YouTube and you will be able to watch and there, there will be um, three days of events and programs that, that uh, will be there on, uh, on, on YouTube. Thanks for mentioning this, Roger. 
Uh, we have one question here from Kurt Schroeder. Uh, it's for Chuck. Uh, do you think the pandemic has advanced ESD and SDGs in any way? Boy, that's 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 a hard one. If if you look at ESD from the from the four pillars, one one being access and retention in quality education, then I think it is really a setback. There are several hundred million children who are no longer in school and probably will not go back. Uh, those children living in poverty and so on have, have been usurped by families either into the workforce or the schools have closed and so on. So from that point, it's, it's a retraction. If you look at questioning the idea of rebuilding, coming back better, I think that many are, are questioning um, what is the, the actual purpose of education? And so there is, uh, there is an opportunity. The third thing is that with the billions of dollars being spent, either countries are going to have to pay this back, which usually means a cutback in big ticket items, education, healthcare. Right, so the, the, we're probably in for for um, uh, budgetary uh, cuts. The only hope is that all our world currencies, every country, is overspending. So what we hope is, is that it will simply be an overall deflation in, in our currency, and, and so we won't really notice it. Right, if everyone's currency deflates at, at the same rate. So it, it's going to take a while to know. Um, we do see, I'll say one last thing, we do see education in a different light simply from the babysitting path. We, we suddenly see the importance of education to the economy in, in, the, in the way of of uh, school closures and so on. There is that opportunity also what we've learned that while online isn't very good, what we can do is work with online, perhaps from a UNESCO perspective, which I try to have, is that there is a way of now delivering really high quality education from more developed countries into um, into those countries that where teachers don't even have any certification. The other thing though with the online is this now is an opportunity for us to learn traditional wisdom and so on. And, and because the second pillar of education for sustainable development is reorienting our existing education systems from a, a goal of development to a goal of sustainable development. And so we have to rethink the purpose of education and what we are doing and so on. And this may be a way of opening it up for the, for the two-eyed seeing and, and some other ways of making our education more effective.